yesterday morning at 2.41 a.m. at General Eisenhower's headquarters, General Jodl, the representative of the German High Command, and of Grand Admiral Dönitz, the designated head of the German state, signed the act of unconditional surrender of all German land, sea, and air forces in Europe to the Allied Expeditionary Forces and simultaneously to the Soviet High Command. The war in Europe is over and people across the world breathe a sigh of relief. In the UK, rationing is still in, but it is a new age, a new dawn. People look out at the war-torn London with a new hope for the future, for technology. Science fiction is in the movie theatres. We see rocket ships and computers. Mod cons in the homes, such as washing machines, hoovers, new cars available on the market, maybe even foreign travel to places like Europe. But there is a new war. We are now playing catch up with our friends across the pond, the Americans, and those pesky Russians to the northeast. There is a new race to create a British nuclear weapon. The former Sellafield Munition Works was selected to produce the fissile materials needed to make Britain's first nuclear bomb. The site was renamed Windscale and by the 1950s had two air-cooled nuclear reactors. To avoid contamination, Sir John Cockcroft insisted on two large filters being attached to the cooling chimneys. At the time, he was mocked for this as it was believed that nuclear disasters were not a real risk and they were nicknamed Cockcroft's Follies as a result but as it would turn out, he was right to do so. Using air rather than water to cool the nuclear fuel would come back to haunt the plant's designers later down the line. In 1957, temperature began to rise in one of the reactors. At the time, it was assumed that increasing the speed of the cooling fans would bring the reactor down to safe levels. However, the heat still rose. Soon, radioactive smoke was seen escaping from the cooling chimney, and the operators realised the worst fears of any nuclear engineer. The uranium fuel rods were on fire. The reactor was in meltdown. The site engineers rushed to don radiation suits and attempt to physically push the burning fuel out of the reactor and into a water bath. But the burnt cooling fins were welded in place with molten uranium. Fans were turned to the max to cool the heat, but this was only pushing more oxygen into the flames, allowing them to spread very rapidly. Working inside, the reactor was extremely dangerous. Nuclear protective clothing in the 1950s was very basic, as can be seen in this educational short film from the period. It wasn't just unpleasant work, it was dangerous. You had to strip off as soon as you got there and put factory clothing on. And then on the way home, you all had to shower. And then you could go right through and then collect your clothes at the other end and come back in the clothes you went in. By the 11th of September, the entire reactor was ablaze, dumping millions of highly radioactive particles into the skies above Britain. It was suggested that CO2 from the nearby Calder Hall reactors could be used to douse the flames, but this failed because it was too little CO2 and it was too late. Eventually it was decided to flood the reactors with water since they were located on the coast with a plentiful supply. However, this was dangerous because it could have created a steam or hydrogen explosion blowing the reactors open to the elements in a similar way to what happened 30 years later at Chernobyl. Fire hoses were connected up to tankers, the nozzles were cut off and the rubber hoses were stuffed directly into the circular slots for fuel rods. After a few hours, the fire was under control and by the following day, 
it was totally out. It is estimated that up to 240 people died with another 140 injured as a result of cancers caused by the radioactive smoke released on that day. However, this would have been much worse had it not been for Cockroft's follies. But what of Windscale Sellafield today, you may ask? Do you, we have a happy ending? Well, I'll leave you with this short clip from a BBC investigation into the site in the early 2000s. Tonight on Panorama, serious safety concerns at Britain's most hazardous nuclear facility revealed by the people who were in charge. It's a race against the clock. It's a ticking clock. Someday, that clock's going to run out and it'll be a problem. We'll show how years of neglect have left parts of Sellafield run down and vulnerable. It was just not up to the standard. It was like a, it was a different world for me. A nuclear site where there aren't always enough workers to meet minimum safety levels. It defies belief, actually, that anything could be working at below safe staffing levels. Where radioactive plutonium and uranium are stored in degrading plastic bottles. This stuff should have been kept in a very, very safe place because it was very dangerous.